Well, hi, welcome to the first Zoom class. The purpose of these classes is it's run by Scientium, and Scientium's purpose is to give you access to the knowledge around Super and give you a format where you can ask all the questions that perhaps you didn't want to ask or didn't know how to ask or thought it might be expensive to ask, who knows. But we're going to create these so that um, members of Scientium and people uh, trying out the site can um, come on board and ask any question they want around Super investing or anything around that they might find on the site as well. Um, so at the moment, there's a lot going on in the in the super industry, a lot of changes being announced. Um, we'll touch on uh, a little bit of that um, through our blogs in, on the site. There's a podcast about it. Um, so plenty of content on there. Um, but really the, the purpose of these little Zoom classes is, is for the audience to ask questions and they can either, this session, these sessions might go for five minutes or, or 20 minutes, depending on how many questions there are. Uh, so you might find questions asked by someone else pretty interesting, uh, or uh, obviously it's an opportunity to ask a question. If for whatever reason we can't answer the question in full, we'll reach out to you because uh, in the regulations, sometimes things can be more personal in nature. So if we sort of decide that it's personal in nature, we'll we'll let you know and um, we'll come back to you and explain what all that means. Um, so let's get into it. Um, again, thanks for coming along. Um, just have a look at if there's any questions being asked, but um, I'll go to you. <laughs> Go to you first, Amy. You, you had a question that you wanted to uh, ask today. Yeah, there you go. Hi, Amy. How are you going? I'm good, thanks, Nigel. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, how much can I contribute in super each year? Yeah, thanks, Amy. So, um, so most people are contributing super through their um, employer, um, and you can put in up to twenty-seven and a half thousand dollars a year. So, your employer will will contribute ten and a half percent for you, and then if that's less than twenty-seven and a half thousand, you can you can top that up. That's that's the main way people contribute. You can also put in tax-free contributions, um, but I assume your question was more around the amount that your employer might be putting in. Yeah, that's right. How much my employer? Thank cool. you. All right, we've got one here from um, from Josh. Uh, Josh has asked, when does super become tax-free? Hey, yeah, Nigel. How are you going? Thanks for your question. Um, so you've heard a bit about super becoming tax-free, have you? Is it, um, you look a bit too young for your um, super to be tax-free, mate, but um, that's a good question. Um, so it comes, it can be tax free when you're a bit older, when you're 60 and older, it, um, it's called a, a super converts into a pension account and that pension account effectively goes to, um, being tax free if, if you've got up to $1.7 million in your fund. So it's a pretty good system because not only are the earnings within the fund tax free, but the money that's paid out to you is tax, is tax free. So, um, yeah, so that's, you have to probably wait a few more years, but it's, um, it's pretty, pretty lucrative, um, when you are 60 plus. That's helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. And Nick, uh, we've got a question here. How is my super taxed? Okay, Nick. Hey, Nigel. How are you going? Hey, good. How are you? Thanks for your question. Um, so, good question. Super's got a lot of taxing points. Um, so, when you put your money into super, you pay tax. Potentially, when you take it out of super, it gets taxed. And along the way, while, you're, while it's earning, it gets taxed as well. So, the, that's just the... the, the uh, it's pretty complicated. There are some complicated uh, uh, rules around it, but it, the basic thing is when your money goes in, you pay 15% tax. So rather than pay your individual rate of tax, which might be an average rate of 30%, for example, then the super fund gets taxed at 15%. You should see that in your statement, in your super statement, end of the year or during the year, you'll see tax come out. Um, and then along the way, the super fund itself is taxed at 15%. So you won't, you don't have to pay that yourself. The super fund organises all that and pays tax at 15% while you're sort of adding to it. And when you stop adding to it, uh, when you're older and retired, it can actually be tax-free for up to a certain amount. Awesome. Thanks, so, Nigel. Did that answer your question? Yeah, cheers. Great. Thanks. Um, and we've got another question here from Josh. Thanks, Josh. Uh, what is all the talk in the press about new tax rates? Will this impact me? Yeah, Josh, great question. So this week, um, if you're into super, you would have, um, it's, it's creating a lot of interest. The um, current government, Labor government has announced some changes um, where they're going to, at the moment, if you're, uh, if you've got, you can have up to $1.7 million in super, if you're sort of retired, um, tax-free, uh, and then it, if you've got an amount above that, it gets taxed at 15%. And they're now saying that if you have over $3 million, it'll be taxed at, um 30 percent so so it's a big change they're saying it's not going to affect that many people but i suppose what people are worried about is that they the government went into this election saying they wouldn't touch super and now they're starting to talk about changing the tax rates and it starts to get confusing and 
and potentially just you know three million dollars might sound a lot of money but that's that's if that's in the rules and that's that's there for a long time in 20 years time that might not be as much money so it's just uh, another thing and confuses everyone and and um, a bit unfortunate but um, we'll see how that pans out um, so Josh uh, again um, I don't know your exact age but um, it, it probably you might have three million dollars of super I don't know I can't I can't judge that but uh, it'll only affect you at the moment under the cut what they've announced so far is if your super funds over three million dollars that's the goal thank you that's the goal yeah well it should be <laughs> good <laughs> Um, Amy, what are the benefits of a self-managed super fund? So um, thanks, Amy. Um, so the um, a self-managed super fund is effectively, in, in super, you've got a trustee and the trustee can be a bank or a financial organisation, but you can also be the trustee yourself. So uh, Amy, you could set up your own fund and, um, and have be the trustee and that's called a self-managed fund. And typically they started, uh, became popular when um, the only options available in the, in the marketplace were your sort of big bank funds, what they called retail funds, run by the likes of MLC and AMP and the banks and Westpac and, and the like. Um, and they were quite expensive. So people started setting up their own fund. And I think there's about 500,000 funds in the country now. Um, and effectively, you, you have a bit more control and they could potentially be um, lower cost and you get a bit more flexibility. And they're particularly very um, beneficial for um, people who are retired. Um, but also can be beneficial if you're younger and you want to hold property or you just want to have a lot of control over your fund. But because of some of the costs associated with them, if you haven't got a lot in super, then they're quite expensive. Uh, typically, the rule of thumb is if you've got maybe $300,000 in super, they start to become feasible from a cost point of view. Um, but there might be a reason to have one underneath that, but that's sort of, um, that's been discussed. So so there are some benefits, again, mainly around your flexibility, your choice, your cost. And when you're older, there's some estate planning benefits as well. Uh, of the fund. Is that thanks, Nigel? Did that help, Amy? Yeah. yeah, it did. Thank you. Have you thinking about setting up a self managed fund? Um, yes, but I don't have that much in super yet. So, yeah. but I'm interested to buy property. So that is definitely uh, something I'd look into. Yeah, well, that's something a self managed super fund can do. The same team can also open accounts for self managed super funds as well. So, all right for today. So again, the thing, the um, first session, uh, some good questions there. Um, we'll record these. I'll go up on the website. So big thanks, Amy, Josh, Nick, for your questions. Um, again, these go into the vault, I suppose, the database as well. So it might help other people who are asking the same sort of questions and around um, super. So we hope these become really helpful uh, and part of the um, CNTM offering. Thanks again. If there's no more questions, we'll, um, we'll, we'll close that off for today's Zoom class.